Lesson 12 Earth's Closing Events Sabbath Afternoon June 15 Truth refines the taste and sanctifies the judgment. It elevates and ennobles and is silently and constantly doing its leavening work till the whole being is cleansed and made a vessel unto honor under the operation of the Holy Spirit to make the receiver of truth fit for the society of pure and sinless angels. Truth as it is in Jesus is not cold and lifeless and formal. Truth is full of warmth, of evidence from the presence of Jesus. We have a message to bear to the world. It involves a cross. The truths are unpleasant because they require self-denial and self-sacrifice. Then how essential that those who bear the truth as they speak the truth faithfully shall by every word and act show that the love of Christ moves them. Truth is always lovely, and those who live the truth as it is in Jesus should study how to present the truth so that its loveliness may appear. Our High Calling, page 34. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Long have we waited for our Savior's return, but nonetheless, sure is the promise. Soon we shall be in our promised home. There Jesus will lead us beside the living stream flowing from the throne of God and will explain to us the dark providences through which on this earth he brought us in order to perfect our characters. There we shall behold with undimmed vision the beauties of Eden restored. Casting at the feet of the Redeemer the crowns that he has placed on our heads and touching our golden harps, we shall fill all heaven with praise to him that sitteth on the throne. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 254. The world is ripening for its destruction. God can bear with sinners but a little longer. They must drink the dregs of the cup of his wrath unmixed with mercy. Those who will be heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ to the immortal inheritance will be peculiar, distinct. Yes, so peculiar, distinct, that God places a mark upon them as His, wholly His. Think ye that God will receive honor and acknowledge a people so mixed up with the world that they differ from them only in name? Read again Titus chapter 2 verses 13 to 15. It is soon to be known who is on the Lord's side, who will not be ashamed of Jesus. Those who have not moral courage to conscientiously take their position in the face of unbelievers, leave the fashions of the world, and imitate the self-denying life of Christ, are ashamed of Him and do not love His example. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 287. Sunday, June 16. Loyalty to God and His Word. The soul that cherishes the love of Christ is full of freedom, light, and joy. In such a soul there are no divided thoughts. The whole man yearns after God. He does not go to men to know his duty, but to Christ, the source of all wisdom. He searches the Word of God, that he may find out what standard he must reach. Can we ever find a surer guide than Jesus? True religion consists in being under the guidance of the Holy One in thought, word, and deed. He who is the way, the truth, and the life takes the humble, earnest, wholehearted seeker and says, follow me. He leads him in the narrow way to holiness and heaven. Christ has opened this path for us at great cost to himself, and we are not left to stumble our way along in the darkness. Jesus is at our right hand, proclaiming, I am the way, and all who decide to follow the Lord will be led in the royal path 
cast up for the ransomed of the Lord to walk in. Reflecting Christ, page 114. The psalmist says, The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple. The Bible is the most instructive and comprehensive history that has ever been given to the world. Its sacred pages contain the only authentic account of the creation. Here we behold the power that stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. Here we have a truthful history of the human race, one that is unmarred by human prejudice or human pride. In the Word of God we find subject for the deepest thought, its truths aroused to the loftiest aspiration. Here we hold communion with patriarchs and prophets and listen to the voice of the Eternal as He speaks with men. Here we behold what the angels contemplate with wonder, the Son of God, as He humbled Himself to become our substitute and surety to cope single-handed with the powers of darkness and to gain the victory in our behalf. Fundamentals of Christian Education, pages 84 and 85. It is not enough for us to believe that Jesus is not an imposter and that the religion of the Bible is no cunningly devised fable. We may believe that the name of Jesus is the only name under heaven whereby man may be saved, and yet we may not through faith make him our personal Savior. It is not enough to believe the theory of truth. It is not enough to make a profession of faith in Christ and have our names registered on the church roll. He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us, by the Spirit which he hath given us. Hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. 1 John chapter 3 verse 24 and 1 John chapter 2 verse 3. This is the genuine evidence of conversion. Whatever our profession, it amounts to nothing unless Christ is revealed in works of righteousness. Christ's Object Lessons, page 312. Monday, June 17. Sealed for Heaven. The Sabbath is not introduced as a new institution, but as having been founded at creation. It is to be remembered and observed as the memorial of the Creator's work. Pointing to God as the maker of the heavens and the earth, it distinguishes the true God from all false gods. All who keep the seventh day signify by this act that they are worshippers of Jehovah. Thus the Sabbath is the sign of man's allegiance to God as long as there are any upon the earth to serve him. The fourth commandment is the only one of all the ten in which are found both the name and the title of the lawgiver. It is the only one that shows by whose authority the law is given. Thus it contains the seal of God, affixed to his law as evidence of its authenticity and binding force. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 307. The angel with the writer's inkhorn is to place a mark upon the foreheads of all who are separated from sin and sinners. Revelation chapter 7 verse 2 Just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, it is not any seal or mark that can be seen, but a settling into the truth both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved. Just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared for the shaking, it will come. Indeed, it has begun already. The judgments of God are now upon the land to give us warning that we may know what is coming. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 1161. I entreat you to move with an eye single to the glory of God. Let His power be your dependence, His grace your strength. By study of the scriptures and earnest prayer, seek to obtain clear conceptions of your duty and then faithfully perform it. It is essential that you cultivate faithfulness in little things, and in so doing, you will acquire habits of integrity in greater responsibilities. The little incidents of everyday life often pass without our notice, but it is these things that shape the character. Every event of life is great for good or for evil. The mind needs to be trained by daily tests that it may acquire power to stand in any difficult position. 
In the days of trial and peril, you will need to be fortified to stand firmly for the right, independent of every opposing influence. God is willing to do much for you if you will only feel your need of Him. Jesus loves you. Ever seek to walk in the light of God's wisdom and through all the changing scenes of life, do not rest unless you know that your will is in harmony with the will of your Creator. Through faith in Him, you may obtain strength to resist every temptation of Satan and thus increase in moral power with every test from God. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 561. Tuesday, June 18. Whom do we worship? In the councils of the synagogue of Satan, it was determined to obliterate the sign of allegiance to God in the world. And to Christ, the man of sin, exalted himself as supreme in the earth, and through him, Satan has worked in a masterly way to create rebellion against the law of God and against the memorial of his created works. Is this not sin and iniquity? What greater contempt could be cast upon the Lord God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, than is cast upon him by ignoring the Sabbath which he instituted, sanctified, and blessed, that it might ever be a memorial of his power as creator? How dare men change and profane the day which God has sanctified? How dare the Christian world accept the spurious Sabbath, the child of the papacy? The Christian world has nourished and cherished the spurious Sabbath as though it had a divine origin when the fact is that it originated with the father of lies and was introduced to the world by his human agent, the man of sin. The false Sabbath has been upheld through superhuman agency in order that God might be dishonored. It is a sign of Satan's supremacy in the earth, for men are worshiping the God of this world. The Signs of the Times, March 12, 1894, Paragraph 3 When the time of trouble comes, every case is decided. There is no longer probation, no longer mercy for the impenitent. The seal of the living God is upon his people. This small remnant, unable to defend themselves in the deadly conflict with the powers of earth that are marshaled by the dragon host, make God their defense. The decree has been passed by the highest earthly authority that they shall worship the beast and receive his mark under pain of persecution and death. Courage, fortitude, faith, and implicit trust in God's power to save do not come in a moment. These heavenly graces are acquired by the experience of years. By a life of holy endeavor and firm adherence to the right, the children of God were sealing their destiny. Beset with temptations without number, they knew they must resist firmly or be conquered. They felt that they had a great work to do, and at any hour they might be called to lay off their armor. And should they come to the close of life with their work undone, it would be an eternal loss. They eagerly accepted the light from heaven, as did the first disciples from the lips of Jesus. When those early Christians were exiled to mountains and deserts, when left in dungeons to die with hunger, cold, and torture, when martyrdom seemed the only way out of their distress, they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ, who was crucified for them. Their worthy example will be a comfort and encouragement to the people of God who will be brought into the time of trouble such as never was. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 212 and 213. Wednesday, June 19. The Early and Latter Rain. Just before his ascension, he gave to his disciples the commission, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Thus was given to the disciples a most precious trust. They were to be the executors of the will in which Christ has bequeathed to the world the treasure of eternal life. They realized the responsibility of their work. 
They knew that they held in their hands the bread of life for a famishing world, and they went everywhere preaching the word. The love of Christ constrained them, and they could not forbear breaking the bread of life to all who were in need. The Review and Herald, January 7, 1902 The apostles spoke by the power of the Holy Ghost, and their words could not be controverted, for they were confirmed by mighty miracles wrought by them through the outpouring of the Spirit of God. The disciples were themselves astonished at the results of this visitation and the quick and abundant harvest of souls. The arguments of the apostles alone, although clear and convincing, would not have removed the prejudice of the Jews which had withstood so much evidence. But the Holy Ghost sent those arguments home with divine power to their hearts. The Story of Redemption, page 245 we should pray as earnestly for the descent of the Holy Spirit as the disciples prayed on the day of Pentecost. If they needed it at that time, we need it more today. The descent of the Holy Spirit upon the church is looked forward to as in the future, but it is the privilege of the church to have it now. Seek for it, pray for it, believe for it. We must have it, and heaven is waiting to bestow it. The measure of the Holy Spirit we receive will be proportioned to the measure of our desire and the faith exercised for it and the use we shall make of the light and knowledge that shall be given to us. We are not willing enough to trouble the Lord with our petitions and to ask Him for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants us to trouble Him in this matter. He wants us to press our petitions to the throne. Last Day Events, page 188. We need not worry about the latter rain. All we have to do is to keep the vessel clean and right side up and prepared for the reception of the heavenly rain and keep praying, let the latter rain come into my vessel. Let the light of the glorious angel which unites with the third angel shine upon me. Give me a part in the work. Let me sound the proclamation. Let me be a co-laborer with Jesus Christ. Thus seeking God, let me tell you, he is fitting you up all the time, giving you his grace. The Upward Look, page 283. Thursday, June 20. The Loud Cry. Christ is saying, Why stand ye here all the day idle? And he adds, Go ye also into the vineyard. Matthew chapter 20, verses 6 and 7. Why is it that many more do not respond to the call? Is it because they think themselves excused in that they do not stand in the pulpit? Let them understand that there is a large work to be done outside the pulpit by thousands of consecrated lay members. Long has God waited for the spirit of service to take possession of the whole church so that everyone shall be working for him according to his ability. When the members of the church of God do their appointed work in the needy fields at home and abroad in fulfillment of the gospel commission, the whole world will soon be warned and the Lord Jesus will return to this earth with power and great glory. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 110 and 111. As the rays of the sun penetrate to the remotest corners of the globe, so God designs that the light of the gospel shall extend to every soul upon the earth. At this time, when the enemy is working as never before to engross the minds of men and women, we should be laboring with increasing activity. Diligently, disinterestedly, we are to proclaim the last message of mercy in the cities, in the highways and byways. All classes are to be reached. As we labor, we shall meet with different nationalities. None are to be passed by unwarned. The Lord Jesus was the gift of God to the entire world, not to the higher classes alone, and not to one nationality to the exclusion of others. His saving grace encircles the world. Whosoever will may drink of the water of life. A world is waiting to hear the message of present truth. In Heavenly Places, page 340.
As the third angel's message swells into a loud cry, great power and glory will attend its proclamation. The faces of God's people will shine with the light of heaven. The Lord will fit men and women, yes, and children, as he did Samuel, for his work, making them his messengers. He who never slumbers or sleeps watches over each worker, choosing his sphere of labor. All heaven is watching the warfare which, under apparently discouraging circumstances, God's servants are carrying on. New conquests are being achieved, new honors won, as the Lord's servants rallying round the banner of their Redeemer go forth to fight the good fight of faith. All the heavenly angels are at the service of the humble believing people of God. And as the Lord's army of workers here below sing their songs of praise, the choir above join with them in thanksgiving, ascribing praise to God and to His Son. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, page 17. For further reading, Sons and Daughters of God, We Are Presented to the Father, page 369, and Maranatha, Confusion of Many Voices, page 189.